Chat GPT, if you have not heard of it yet, where have you been? You must have been under a rock for the last month at least. But it is one of the most talked about tools on the planet right now. However, I'm going to ask it a real questions today. I'm going to see whether it can take my job as the productivity app guy on YouTube who helps people to find apps, see whether it knows and can take over my knowledge of productivity and let's see whether it can recommend the best tool for you. So I've broken this video into six rounds. We're going to ask it six quality questions about productivity and we're going to see what the answer is for all of these and we're going to rate each answer. So let's dive into today's video. So if you're interested, you can become a subscriber here on Keep Productive. We talk about plenty of productivity tools and resources until AI takes our job, but we also have a guide to some of the productivity apps that have AI with inside them on Tool Finder and you can find that linked below. So here we are with the Chat GPT website and as you can imagine, the first question, oh, I've broken this into six rounds, I told you. The first round is about asking it what the best no, uh, tasks app is and the best notes app and the best calendar apps. And then we're going to move on to giving it scenarios of, for example, uh, trickier scenarios like I'm a student in this situation and I want a app to be recommended to me and see what it comes out with. And then we're gonna do that for each of those different experiences. So let's get started and see what it recommends for us. The first one is what is the best task management app ever on the market right now? Let's see what it comes up with. Round one. Ah, I like the first bit of this. It is difficult to say which task management app is the best. It is smart. <laughs> Some popular options include Asana, Trello, Todoist, and Microsoft To Do. It might be helpful to try a few different apps to determine which one's best. I feel like I've been educating this in, in the long run <laughs> about what to say. Um, and in this answer, I would I would give the answer probably a seven, seven and a half, maybe, mm -hmm. just purely because Asana and Trello do seem like more extreme options to recommend task management. Um, but they've got to do is to Microsoft to do, I'd say, pretty well right. So I'm going to give that one a fairly good 7.5. Let's go over to round two for notes. So we've just typed it in. It might be a little bit laggy because so many people are using it these days. Oh my goodness. Maybe I timed it well with uh, the amount of people that are using it right now. Oh, it has a dark mode, even better. Maybe it's thinking too much. Maybe we move on to round three and come back to round two. Ah, oh, it won't let me in. Okay, I had to reboot it and I, I would probably need rebooting as well. So AI and me are fairly similar right now. <laughs> it's, hit a, it's hit a solid wall. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there are many great apps on the market. Here we go. Some popular ones are Evernote, OneNote, Google Keep, SimpleNote, Bear, and Apple Notes. Okay, so obviously it's recommending that you should do your research before, which I like. I'm a big advocate. Thank you, AI. Wouldn't recommend Simple Notes in there. But I would say the large majority of these basic note-taking applications are probably on the ball. So I'm gonna give this an eight and a half because that feels like a good collection of apps for somebody that's just looking for the best note-taking application. There's just simple starter use cases, and they are. They are really solid apps when it comes to that. So let's ask the calendar application question too. Round three. So again, these are like all rounders. Maybe I should have given them a bit more context to that. Some popular ones in Google, Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, Outlook Calendar, and Fantastical. To be honest, that is the state of the market right now. There's not many tools that are outside of that that actually really go much further. Um, obviously, it's giving some context to each of these. I really like this. Like it's already given me a lot of stuff. In terms of third party solutions, it didn't give many, but Fantastical is probably the most all round solution 
in compared to all of these, I guess, when you're not thinking of Apple, Google, Microsoft, etc. So I'm going to give that one an 8, 8.5, 8.5. So we're going to go into round four, and this is when we get the specifics in. So we're going to ask questions that are more detailed around a scenario that somebody might be trying to cope with. So um, recommend me a task, a to-do list app that is best suited for students that need to manage their uh, task list with other students. So in this case, I would personally probably recommend one of three apps, um, Todoist, Notion, and Microsoft To Do, because they all have sharing abilities, relatively good free plans with the functions that students find important, and they're pretty simple to understand. So those are the three ones I would suggest it comes up with. But let's see. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, Trello, it's gone for off the bat, I didn't think of Trello. Trello is actually not a bad solution. Um, actually, it's a very good solution for students. So it's beating me there. Yeah, I'm going to give that one a nine. It's duped me into thinking that those more traditional apps are good, but Trello is actually a really good visual one. It's got good free plans. It does have some really nice visual, like functionality. It helps you to organize projects too, and tons of labels and custom fields if you go into the more premium, but obviously you wouldn't as a student. So I like that. I'm giving that a nine, nine out of 10. Healthy round here. We're gonna go for another one. We're gonna do round five and recommend me a note taking application for managing my ideas, research, uh, research collection or capture and connecting ideas up together. So what I would say is it probably gonna recommend a PKM tool like Obsidian, um, and I would even say the others like LogSeek and, and Reflect and things like that. So let's see what it comes up with in round fit five. Okay. It's given me one note. I'm going to say like the reason why it did that is because the research aspect is academia probably points towards that and it does have link notes yes in what it's saying so in, in to some extent it does capabilities like have the capabilities to do it but I probably wouldn't rank it as highly as I would the other ones PKM wise but I'm going to give it an 8.5 because it's still a healthy option it's still a healthy option and we're going to round up with round six. Um, I'm going to say recommend me a calendar app that plugs in with Google Calendar and offers a way to plan and schedule meetings. Now, this might go ahead and recommend me something like Calendly or like some of the other scheduling applications, but I really wanted to recommend like you could say Fantastio Cron, but obviously its knowledge is fairly limited. So I'm I'm much more skeptical of what it's gonna do because, okay, it's actually recommending calendar.com, which is a good solution, but it's just, um, mm, yeah, I think let's assume it's calendar.com. Yeah, that, that is a solution. It does have some abilities and it's talking about here some built-in conferencing functions. So calendar.com, if it's the one I'm assuming is, not a bad bet. So I'm gonna give that an eight, I think. And that's seemingly a good answer, yeah, an eight. Because again, if you're thinking very plainly, that is a good solution. I think one thing that it does well at is recommending tools that are quite well-known and well-established. And whereas I'm, probably someone that goes for the third party or the more newer, more modern option. So this is probably much better than I thought as a recommendation tool. Now, one of the things we're doing with Tool Finder soon is developing a way to enhance the learning using existing knowledge, not artificial intelligence. But in the future, I want to make sure that this is as accurate as it possibly could be. So again, 
it's important to be able to see how we weave this into the future of productivity tools because it will be a fundamental part of helping you define a productivity tool. So anyway, we had a good four, six rounds and I'm gonna give overall an AI an eight, 8.5 out of 10. Somewhere in between there, a solid IMDB rating uh, <laughs> and probably, I don't know what's an 8.2 these days. Um, let's find an 8.2 movie. Uh, <laughs> 8.5, let's go for an 8.5. Movies with 8.5 IMDB rating. Senna, Senna, could well be that. Let's see. What rating should we give it? Not a, not Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> um, hmm, ones that I've seen. Casablanca. It's a Casablanca quality results here. So again, very, very good. Uh, and one that I, I'm pretty impressed with overall. So uh, hopefully you found this video entertaining, whether I'm sure in the comments people will be going, oh, Francesco, I think that he got it all wrong. Um, <laughs> let me know what you think below. Thank you very much for joining us here today on Keep Productive and I look forward to future videos with you all. Cheerio, folks.